Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my journey to sustainable health and meaningful success. If you're coming back and you've already subscribed, welcome back. Y'all are my people and I love you so much. And if you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of this video. Today I have finally stopped reacting to my upline diamond. Uh, that was just brutal. Three parts because I wanted to react to the entire hour and 13 minute audio and we're finally done with that. So now I'm reacting to one of the audios that my upline Platinums uh, <laughs> lovingly referred to as Ronald and Raina um, because I'm not creative with fake names. Um, and I'm going to just react to their audio that they recorded in 2015. I was in Amway from 2017, like January of 2017, to July of 2019. So I've been out of it for a year, and uh, the two and a half years that I spent in Amway were brutal. Uh, <laughs> brutal is like a word, that's the word of the day. <laughs> um, I lost nearly $20,000, um, strained my relationships, my relationships with my family, um, lost a lot of friends and just in general became my most unhealthy, most miserable self. So, um, this audio gives a lot of perspective, um, with regards to the mentality that our team had in building the Amway business. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to listen to it at a 1.25 speed because I I'm impatient. I don't want to listen to these people, but we're doing this and I'm doing this for you. So here we go. When I first got started in business early on, um, our upline, obviously, they gave us a lot of CDs, but they also gave us some tapes. And, and I heard something on a tape when I first got started in business. And honestly, Rodney could probably tell you, I'm getting better at remembering, you know, whose tape it was, you know, whose CD, whose audio, what the audio was called, all that kind of stuff. I'm still getting better at that. So I don't remember who it was. But I heard something. Somebody was talking about being a wandering generality versus being a meaningful specific in this world. And, you know, a wandering generality, if you can picture it, I think of it like everybody that I work with. Um, they're all wandering generalities. Their attitude and their desires and their thoughts change from day to day depending on what the person sitting next to them says or what they saw on reality television. Um, you know, they're, they're just, they're on a path to nowhere and they're going there really, really fast. Um, and they just, they're, they're not really concerned about what their future holds. They just, you know, this is my job, I'm gonna do it every day, then I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna go to sleep, and I'm gonna come back and do it again. But I got really excited about the idea of being a meaningful specific. Being on this earth for a reason, which we all are. Having a purpose and living for that purpose and being excited about it every day. Okay, um, so obviously she's coming out right out of the gate with this whole us versus them thing, uh, mentality, which is crafted within a lot of cults that basically anything on the outside of our organization is bad, it's evil, it's unproductive, it's a wandering generality, whatever that means, um, and it's just without purpose. And this is what she's, I mean, this is the narrative that she's crafting, is that everybody outside of this Amway business is a wandering generality. Um, they don't have any purpose in life, they just live to go to work and come home and go do it all again the next day. Um, they're not concerned about their future. They don't care about their families. They don't live with purpose. They don't wake up with hope and excitement for what the day is going to bring. They're just depressed and they're living their meaningless lives. And then she contrasts that with um, everybody in Amway is a meaningful specific. I just, first of all, I hate that wandering generality versus a meaningful specific like what even are those words together i don't even understand <laughs> please if you can bring more light and more clarity to this topic comment down below because i don't get it um i think it's just a bunch of hooey and uh you know big words mashed together in order to make you sound more intelligent than you actually are but yeah so then she wants to you know create the narrative that Everybody in Amway is driven with purpose and um, have meaning in their lives and are excited and, um, you know, are filled with passion and 
dedication and determination and they actually have ambitions whereas everybody else outside of the Amway business don't have that um, which is very very untrue we've talked about this a lot on, on this channel where it's like uh, you don't think doctors you don't think firefighters you don't think um, you know law enforcement officers or lawyers or um, you know daycare workers or teachers um, you know I could just go through the whole list of people who choose their career paths because they're passionate about what they're doing and people who save money and invest money and are wise with their money because they are concerned about the future and people who raise their children with values and with discipline and um, with good awareness of wealth management and money management all of these things are because they are concerned about their future and because they do want to pass down a legacy to their children and that's not just limited to the amway business i didn't think i needed to clarify that but it is actually really tragic the fact that i bought in to that mentality for two and a half years and there are so many people in the Amway business who also have bought into this mentality that if you're not in the Amway business, your life sucks and you don't live with purpose. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. And what I realized very quickly is that that life of being a meaningful specific is radical. And that's what we're going to talk to you guys about today. Um, you know, it's, it's weird. And I don't know, for those of you who are in here for the first time, if this is your first weekend around this team, when I first came out to a function like this, a conference like this, I thought you guys were weird. I totally did, and I know you've heard it already, but you know, they smile way too much, they're totally fake, there's no way this could all be true, what is wrong with these people? You know, that was kind of my mentality. But what I realized as I spent time around this team is that the fact that everybody in this room, that the leaders down here were going somewhere, that they were fighting for something, they were meaningful specifics on this earth, and that's what I wanted. And so Rodney and I decided, you know what, we made the decision one time that, you know what, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do with our life. This is what we want our career to be. We know that this business is, you know, the, the vehicle that we're supposed to use to change the world and to be meaningful specifics. And because we made that decision one time, that kind of meant that we were going to be weird too, just like the people that were in this room the first time I came. We were going to be radical. Um, and so I kind of just wanted to share with you guys some of the things that um, we've done in our time in business. And I'll just give you guys a few examples, and I'm sure Rodney will share some more with you. But just to let you know that the reason why they're weird is because they are actually unnaturally positive. We've talked about this a lot, that um, you're not allowed to say anything negative about your life um, and you're only allowed to speak positive and uplifting and manifesting words that things that you want to come true. So even if you are dog tired, you're broke and you have terrible relationships with everybody in your life, you're supposed to speak that you're wide awake and feeling great you're you know living in wealth and prosperity and that your relationships are wonderful and fantastic and that you are uh, you've never been more fulfilled in your life <laughs> so yeah the people in the amway business who are like that are weird they are weird um and that's that's a normal feeling reyna to feel like those people are weird because the more you are in this environment the more you're sucked into it you become like those people and you start losing perspective on how weird and how unnatural the positivity and the atmosphere is. Um, and you think it's because you've found such an amazing thing that all these people are just so great and they're so radical. They're just so passionate about what they're doing. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of buy into that and you buy into that for yourself too, all the while really digging yourself deeply into a hole and then trying to fake your way out of it. So it's it's a real rough cycle, but what she just described as, you know, um, being radical and becoming like that team and, and being a weird person, um, yeah, it's unfortunate because that is the cycle and that's how people get really sucked into this um, environment. Funny, when our daughter Ava was born, she was actually two weeks overdue. And it just so happened that that weekend that you know, my um, midwife said, you know, you're, you're two weeks past you, you have to have the baby, you have to come into the hospital on Friday night. And there was a seminar rally, a conference going on in Chicago that weekend. So we said, okay, no problem, we totally understand where you're coming from, we'll be there Sunday night. And she was like, no, no, you don't understand. This baby must come out, 
you must come in Friday. Rodney and I were like, we totally understand. So we'll be there Sunday. We'll meet you there. Okay. And, and we did. We were at the conference the whole weekend. And then we went in to um, have Ava on the Sunday night. Um, a week later, we had actually qualified um, as we were getting close to having Ava. We had qualified 7,500 for the first time. And there was a 7,500 leadership that Alan and Michelle were having. And so a week after Ava was born, we got in the car and drove from Chicago to Florida um, to spend that time with the team. Do I remember any of the weekend? Absolutely not. But we made the decision to be radical, and that's what we were. And every, all of our you know, friends and family outside of the business thought we were totally crazy. But you know what? We knew what we were fighting for. We knew what we were trying to do, and we were going to do whatever necessary to make that happen. Yeah, no, you are crazy. <laughs> you are. You're, that's insane. It's insane to go against your doctor's orders, especially when it involves the life of your child that is inside of you, um, not just your own life, but you're also endangering the life of your baby. And to avoid that, to, to, to dismiss your medical professional's advice in order to go to a conference so that you can earn money. And the thing that she says is like, you know, and we were willing to do whatever it takes uh, in order to do that because we know what we were fighting for. And it's just ridiculous that that is praised and celebrated in that environment that she would do something incredibly dangerous for herself and her child because she wanted to have the clout of going to a conference uh, in the midst of like a medical crisis and she's just going to be radical and an excuse remover um, and basically like prove that to their team and make money. I mean, it's it, when it comes down to it, it, she chose money over her own safety and the safety of her child against the orders of her doctor. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, you are insane. That That's really crazy. Um, you know, a couple other things. Um, you know, for us, when there was ever a decision in the past, you know, if finances were rough and there was a decision between, um, you know, are we going to do whatever we need to do for our business or are we going to pay our bills? For us, it was never really a question. We made sure the necessities were taken care of. Um, and then outside of, you know, those very specific necessities, our business came first. And so, you know, if it was, you know, this money can go to our light bill or it can go to our business and our light bill might shut off, the money would go to our business. And again, for us, that was just decisions that we knew that we, we needed to make because we wanted the lifestyle of these leaders down here. Uh. Yep. Again, choosing over your necessities, your life necessity, paying bills, paying rent, paying your electric bill, you know, paying for groceries you're paying the business, you're buying your own products, you're buying conference tickets, you're buying books at full price in order to fuel the LTD side of the pyramid scheme. You're doing all of this instead of actually paying for your necessities. Again, not just for yourself, but also for your kids who have no choice in the matter of how they're raised and how they grow up. And it's just really sickening to think of how many people are actually making these kinds of decisions and putting their kids in a situation that is not ideal for being for, for growing up. I mean, the the idea that you would buy meal bars from your business instead of actually buying nutritious groceries like actual food for your children, but you're just feeding them meal bar after meal bar. Um, and I it just seems so it seems like mistreatment of your child say freedom, freedom. there's a couple people who didn't say say it one more time freedom for me freedom. You know what I wanted to do I wanted to charge the atmosphere with this word so that we can kind of absorb it in our thinking right because our minds are kind of like these these fields that when you put the right things in the right things come out right but it's not important just to take the good things out. You've got to continue to put good things into the soil, right? Otherwise, you're not going to have what you want. So here's what we're talking about today. We're talking about being radical. How many people want to be radical? Usually, it's, you know, it's kind of instinctual when you're going to go through a talk or something like this. You look up the definition of the word. I, I didn't like the definition when I looked it up, so I'm not going to tell you what I read. I'm just going to tell you what I think radical is, and we're just going to roll with it, okay? Because that that's the whole point of looking it up anyway, so we have a common frame of reference, right? So here, radical is, is something that is a rapid departure from everything everyone else is used to. Is that fair? Anybody want to argue with me on it? Okay, cool. And I wasn't threatening you guys with the question. I was just saying, okay, so. You know what's also radical? Cults. Cults are pretty radical too. They like to radically dissent from anything that is normal or commonly accepted. 
So anyways, I think it's, it's totally opposite or totally different than what the world is used to. So let me, let me kind of set the stage here for you. I, I, I was trying to figure out how to talk about radical, and nothing was coming to me that I really felt stirred by. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to talk to you from what we've lived, not because we're so radical, but because we once upon a time saw this team as radical. And now everything that we believe lines up perfectly with them. You know what it's like? How many of you guys love, you know, what's, your, what's some of the favorite restaurants out there? TGI Fridays, anybody? McDonald's? Whatever our favorite restaurants are, why do we, you know, Chipotle, okay, good. We have some Chipotle people in the house? Okay, all right, all right, all right, it's okay. So we eat these restaurants, we love the food, it tastes really good. Now here's one thing that we do notice. Have you ever tried to eat something really healthy after all that stuff? How's it taste? It tastes kind of nasty a little bit, right? But here's what you got to think about. Your mind has been, or your, your taste buds have been so tweaked to the salt, to the buttery, sugary goodness of all of this, you know, basically good tasting death is kind of what we're eating. You know what I'm saying? That's really all it is. I know it's a radical perspective, right? But the minute you kind of make a, a leap to start eating something a little bit healthier or a lot healthier, like some whole foods, not the store, but the actual idea of a whole food. Yeah, they actually come whole. You can actually buy those things, right? A whole food or something healthy doesn't taste nearly as good to what you're already tweaked to. So this is, it's a total radical change when you start eating healthy. But it's better for you to eat healthy. Why? Because you want to live. And your body needs sustenance to do that. So when you come into this kind of an environment, you know what it's like? It's like making a switch from all the, the buttery gossip, sweet vices that come through the television screen at us, right? All of the saltiness of, of society when it comes to communication and the messages that we so love. I mean, think about it. We have such a penchant for disaster. We want to see people fail. We want to see people hurt. How, how many people love the UFC? Why? Because we just like seeing people get the tar kicked out of them. I mean, it's just, it's just, we just love that. You know what I mean? If you want to see people fail, join an MLM because you'll be surrounded by failure. <laughs> Let's be real. Like 99% of the people in an MLM fail. So if you really want to see failure, then you are in the right place, honey. Go on ahead and join that MLM. But just to point out again, he's creating that us versus them narrative um, that, you know, everybody in Amway, we're the healthy food. This is the healthy mentality. This is what's going to build you up and nourish you. Whereas everything outside is gossip and anger and attracted to drama and meaningless wandering generalities. <laughs> and... Yeah, so the, it's yet again just more um, creating division and separating yourself from you, you're either an Amway person and you're a meaningful specific or you're outside and you are only eating junk food and you're dying rapidly. They have vapors delays and, you know, if you guys don't, they have in Chicago, we have something called traffic. It's regular in Chicago. So when you're when you're driving somewhere and they have these gapers delays, it's because there was an accident and everyone's just totally drawn to this disaster, right? So when you come into a setting like this, and you know what you do? You hear these organic personalities, and all they're really doing is just talking from a perspective of truth. They're just so natural. They're talking about good old-fashioned values that matter to you, and you wonder, well, what? It's radical. What kind of team does that? Okay, some of you got caught off guard. What kind of team does that? We talk about those kinds of things. Why? Because those those are really what shape our happiness. All the things that we try to chase by, by spending so many hours in the television screen, so many hours behind the video games, so many hours behind all this other stuff, we're trying to fill something. And the only way to deal with weakness is radically. That's really all we're doing. We're trying to fill a weakness. I was going through college. I was very celebrated in the world of academics. I had a 5.0 on a 4.0 scale because I was a part of an honors program in, in the University of Illinois, Chicago. I worked my guts out. I didn't know exactly where I wanted to go in life. I just knew I wanted to succeed. So since I knew I wanted to succeed and I knew I was going to succeed, I worked as hard as I possibly could, got the straight A's, got the grades, did all these different things. I was radical for that. The reason I was radical for that is because I needed school to work. I'm time to go into the story right now, but school had to work for me. You know what? I saw this business plan, and I saw it from a guy named Ed Lukasik, who sat across the table from me, and I'm telling you, with as much freedom as, as any one person could muster up during this 10, 15 minutes, he showed me what my, my life could actually be like. And in an instant, I realized that I could... I mean, you heard Ross Coleman talk about, hey, when your life is about to end, you see it flash before your eyes? Well, my, my, when, when Ed sat down with me, he did what's called a QI. Some of you have heard about those. He did a QI with me. My life flashed before my eyes. You know what that means? I was dead. So as my life flashed before my eyes because he started talking to me about freedom and what freedom really meant. Say freedom. Yeah. As he started talking to me about this freedom, I automatically realized I, I was going down the wrong path the entire time. So here I am with all these, high school, you know, these college accolades, uh, you know, a, a nominee for the Rhodes Scholar for the University of Illinois Chicago. This means I was going to get to go to Cambridge in England for free. Now... 
This is another piece of the story again, but that was really valuable to a person in my situation. I needed that to work. But as soon as I saw this business plan, I said, you know what? I don't even need school anymore. And I didn't finish. I didn't go back to school. Do you know what they called me? They didn't call me radical. They called me crazy, stupid. The first person I called when I saw this thing was her. I'm not going to tell you what she called me. I said, you just didn't see what I saw. But I saw something from a radical's perspective. And you know what it did? It was like the entrance of light came into my heart and I realized that everything else I was quote unquote living for wasn't really life. What's the point of making a better living if you're not making life? That's radical. So Ed planted this idea in my mind. And you know what he said to me? He said, Rodney, you don't have to, you don't have to spend the rest of your life working hard and still get to the end of it and not have anything that you want. What's the point of that? Okay, I just need to pause this because uh, he may not have had time to go into the story, but I do. Um, the reason why he needed school to work out for him was because um, he had a criminal record and the, he had gotten all of those accolades and he had accomplished that GPA um, within the college that he was going to while he was in prison. Allegedly, I don't know if I have to say that uh, legally, but allegedly, that's what he did. And I'm not shading anybody who has a criminal record um, and anybody who has had to work their way up from a circumstance that is less than ideal for accomplishing success. I have time to go into that story because I'm not trying to BS anybody and I'm not trying to make the story sound better than it is. He needed school to work out because he wanted to, you know, make his life better and make his chances of succeeding financially better because of the, his past. So that's, it, it's important to know. And what's important to know about that is the fact that they will advocate that you leave whatever job, career, educational path that you're on in order to join Amway. They discouraged me from going back to school. I have 37 credits left to graduate, which I could squeeze in in two semesters. So I was actually like, I actually had to make the decision while I was in Amway whether or not I was going to go back to school for a year. Um, I was still living with my parents, so I could have just basically dropped everything and gone back to school and finished my degree or move out of my parents' house into this apartment, so you can tell what uh, decision I made, um, and not go back to school, but to continue trying to spin my wheels in Amway. And that's the decision that I made. Um, I'm not blaming anybody for that decision. I'm a big girl. I can make my own decisions, and I did, and it sucks <laughs> that I did make that decision. But that's the reality of my story. Um, but the thing is, is that they encourage people who are in those similar situations. Um, and not, you know, I don't know of anybody specifically who also had a, a, you know, criminal record who, you know, really was trying to boost their ability to succeed in the business world or in the financial world in general um, by going back to school. But that was actually the most logical route. That was actually the most likely route that he was actually going to succeed um, financially. I, spe I specify financially because I think that there's a lot more to meaningful success. We talk about that a lot. But just in terms of making money, you are more likely to get a better job and to get uh, or even just be educated to be able to start your own business and be, um, you know, in your own chosen field. If you go and get educated and if you take those necessary measures in order to get that experience and get that education. Um, but what they do is they say, you know, as soon as you hear about this business, your options just aren't as good as this Amway business. So you just need to get an Amway. The problem with that is, yeah, Ronald and Raina are the exception to the rule. They are the 1% of the, uh, out of the 100 people, they're the one that actually made it to be able to make some sort of a living. But they're not actually, you know, Amway and other MLMs, multi-level marketing companies, the, if you look at any of their income disclosure statements, sorry, there's like a bug around here. If you look at any of their income disclosure statements, you can see how likely it actually is that you would make it to that level where you don't have to work a job. So it's just really disappointing the fact that they misrepresent the truth, allegedly, 
They misrepresent the truth of everything that they do, of their character or of their religious beliefs and, and how upright they are, um, and the, the sequence of events with that versus like the situation and the um, likelihood of success. And it just, they, they misrepresent themselves um, in every aspect of their story, not just the business, um, not just trying to recruit people, but they are misrepresentative of, of like everything that they had to do in order to succeed and their entire story. It's really just aggravating. So I left that entire process. You want to know why? Because I decided to step into the radical world of freedom where I can make my decisions. When I wake up in the morning, I don't think, man, I need to go work for money. That's not how we live. You know why we work? We work for a purpose. My work is always connected to a purpose. That's a radical perspective. Since I'm working for a purpose, I'm never empty. I always have stuff to do, right? I always have things to do. And I'm not, so freedom is a radical thing. How many of you guys realize you're not supposed to leave your kids eight, nine, ten hours a day? You guys realize that? You're supposed to wake up when you're rested next to the one that you love and you're married to? That's, that's radical too. You guys realize it's okay to be, to be totally radical about your own freedom and it's actually it's never going to happen without it and yeah you know what you're going to have to stand alone a lot of times people aren't going to connect with you they're not going to understand you that's okay you want to know what's accepted what's natural is wake up every day for the rest of your life because when is retirement at this point when are you ever going to have enough money to outsmart or outwork the system it's not geared for that the system is geared to keep you in it so you know what you need here when i understood this i sold out lock stock and barrel to being a part of this room to being in this in this room because from these people i learned to start thinking freedom you're not going to you're not going to have freedom when you when you make enough it's not about money it's about thinking you'll be free when you have the mentality for freedom oh hate it hate all of it that that he just said the system wasn't made to get anybody out of it it's meant to keep people in it he's talking about the job field he's talking about employment uh, where you actually have retirement plans, where you actually have 401ks, where you actually have the investment opportunities to invest in your own company, not in a pyramid scheme kind of way, but actually like have stock in the company that you work for. You know, he's saying that that's not designed to get you out of it, but keep you to keep you in, which is number one, it's that's just untrue. And number two, um, you can also like love what you do and live with purpose in your career. And number three, you can do stuff outside of your job that also brings you fulfillment. Even if what you do is not necessarily your life calling, you can still live a life of purpose. Um, so, and then the fact that he says, you know, I, I tie everything that I do with a purpose. Uh, so that's why I always have something to do. So you're always at work. You're always driven by Amway. And to say that it's not about money, but the whole first half of your talk was about all the decisions that you made that were radical and endangering to yourselves and to your children uh, were because you were trying to get financial freedom. You were trying to get money. And the system of multi-level marketing companies is designed to keep people in as long as possible without realizing that they're never going to make it. And so that's why they embed all of this morality, all of this purpose and all of the emotions to it because they are designing that system to keep people buying into the dream, buying into the mentality, the wealth mentality. It's just like last week, part three, where we talked about what the diamond said about how I don't sell the Amway business. I sell the idea. I sell the dream and I sell you guys. I sell this environment. So everything within this MLM is designed to keep you in and the MLM, the 99% that don't make money or who that lose money, that's designed to keep you at the bottom of the pyramid. The Amway business and multi-level marketing is not designed to get everybody at the top because then there would be no workers at the bottom. It is a pyramid structure, even if you don't think it's a pyramid scheme. There is a very minority group up at the top that is making all of the money and reaping all of the benefits of all of the people in the bottom who are purchasing their own products and trying to cold message all of their friends and losing everything in the midst of trying to build this dream to make it to the top and they are never going to make it to the top. So for him to say all of that he just said is 
is just complete bullocks. It's <laughs> it's just complete hooey. And I, it's infuriating to hear that that's the mentality that, that, that they are brainwashing you with, that that's the mentality that they are trying to indoctrinate you with, um, that what you're doing here is, is for a purpose and that you're more likely to exceed, to succeed here than anywhere else. And everybody who works a job or have, has their own business, uh, are doing so because, because they are a slave to money and they don't have any purpose in their lives and they're programmed to just be in a system that isn't meant for them to escape, which is just the exact opposite of the truth. You'll be wealthy when you have a wealth mentality, and that's a radical thing that you can only get by spending time around these people. Belief is radical. What kind of team believes? A radical team believes, right? What kind of team wakes up when they feel like waking up? Exactly. What kind of team goes only where they want to go and has their entire life in a bubble that's invite only? A radical team, right? What kind of team goes to work with a mistletoe in their back belt loop in the middle of summer and doesn't say a word until they're walking out? A radical team does those kinds of things, right? And you want to know how you're going to get radical? I mean, dive into these. Listen, guys, we have, we have such a powerful freedom-creating machine called education. Frederick Douglass said it this way. Education makes a man unfit to be a slave. Education will unfit you to be a slave. You'll no longer settle for things that you settle for right now when you understand better than what you understand right now. You can outgrow everything you have by learning to develop a radical perspective, spending time around radical people because of the way that they see it. Mediocrity doesn't blow any whistles as it's on its way into your life. You realize that? It's not like, hey, hey, here's mediocrity. I'm coming in. No, no, no. You just wake up 30 years from right now in front of the, whatever the technology is at that point, realizing, wait a minute, remember that one time period when I had that opportunity? What was that called again? Oh, well, whatever. Honey, bring me a beer. Your freedom is so necessary. Here's why. Because other people don't even know that it's possible. They're not even thinking on this level. When you get into this room around these people, all you're going to hear for hours and hours and hours. What you got this weekend was people bombarding you with freedom perspective. It's only going to be in hindsight that you probably realize the value of this if you're brand new. But this freedom perspective is what we're all about. And the more people we can have getting this, understanding it, growing in it, developing it, the more radical the, appro the, the more radical we can become together as a team, the more radical the results that we can get. And then you know what we'll be? Free radicals. How many people are excited about being free radicals? You may have to have the courage to stand alone. But the person who's not afraid to stand alone will never have to. Be a radical team. See you at the top. For existing IBOs only, not for use with prospects. While the techniques and approaches suggested have worked for others, no one can guarantee that these techniques and approaches will work for you. In addition, we want to emphasize that success in this business does not come without hard work. The success depicted in this profile may reflect income from sources other than Amway, such as earnings from the sale of training and education materials, or other businesses and investments. <laughs> the success depicted in this video, <laughs> or the, the tactics used by others may not necessarily be the tactics that will be useful for you. Okay, well, after we just got done listening to my upline platinums talk about how great they are and how pristine their history is and how their story went and how many decisions that they made that endangered themselves and their families and all of the decisions that made them weird to others, but you know, they know that they are part of a team that actually lives with purpose and is not just wasting their way, their, their lives away, working in a system that is designed to keep them down at the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. So glad we have that wealth mentality. Um, and the fact that he's like, if you, if you, you might have to need the courage to stand alone, but if you have that courage, you never will have to. It, like, what in the world? Nobody, it just doesn't make sense. Nothing that he said makes sense. But, um, yeah, I had to have the courage to stand alone, and I was alone, like, 24-7, other than Tuesday nights and whatever ever other, um, you know, impromptu meetings that they called where I had to drop everything and go down to Chicago. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of life that I lived where I was alone all the time. And it's incredibly isolating. And 
It's just the fact of the matter is, is that the majority of the people in that business, that business, is they're not going to succeed. They'll either eventually just drop off or they will spend the rest of their lives in a system that is designed to keep them down. That's designed not to have everybody at the top because that's just not feasible. It's not plausible within the Amway or any other MLM or any other business for that matter. When you try to sell the idea that everybody can su succeed, everybody can make it to the top um, of anything, it's like, mm, it, that's just not how the world works. There's going to be the bottom layer. Unfortunately, within Amway and MLMs, the bottom layer is giving money and not getting anything back in return. Whereas in the business world, in, in the actual like corporate world, if you work a job, you don't have to pay money to work that job. You don't have to give anything. You just go to work, get paid, come home, spend time with your family. Whereas with Amway, there's a lot of people who are spending 24 seven working to build this business and wasting away the time that they have with their kids um, and making decisions that could potentially put their family at risk. I mean, having the electric bill off and everything like that, it's just, it's ridiculous. So that's all that I have on this audio. Uh, please comment down below if I missed anything, because there's a lot I'm, I'm noticing as I'm like listening to this audio this, I, if I were to pick apart every sentence that they said, because every sentence is like, it, it either doesn't make sense or it actually is just a complete falsehood. Um, so if I were to pick that apart, it would be a much longer audio. Just even like the comment that he made about how like, if you pass up on this opportunity, 20 years from now, you're going to be thinking about, you know, oh, what was that? What was that opportunity that I was given? Like, what was that business that I was invited to? Oh, anyway, honey, pass me a beer or bring me a beer. It's like even that statement in and of itself has so many underlying connotations of like the woman is serving her husband. The woman has to go grab her husband a beer. Um, drinking beer is lazy and sluggish and bad and evil. And, uh, you know, you're going to be just basically a, a wandering generality if you're not in this business. Just that statement alone. And that was just a passing comment that he made. Um, so I feel like <laughs> I did the best I could in addressing all of the BS in this audio. But comment down below if I missed anything. Or if you just want to expound. Because we're all angry at this point. So love you guys so much. Uh, catch me later next Wednesday for more anti-MLM stuff. Or um, Sunday for part two of the eight paradigms that I had to shift in order to lose weight without yo-yo dieting. So anyway, <sighs> okay, bye. <laughs>